G'day everyone, welcome back to another tipping video on the channel. Pre-finals buys out of the way, it is now finals week. Let's get into my tips for week one of this year's AFL finals series. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you do go on to enjoy today's video. And let's get into it. Okay everyone, so just before we get into my tips for the finals series of week one, we'll just quickly go over my tips from round 24 because I'm actually yet to go over them. So just do them quickly. Six out of nine, so finishing off the home and season, I think fairly good in the top 19%. So hey, my second half of the season tipping's been a lot better. So hopefully we can carry that into the finals. Uh, but yeah, back to the pies. I thought this one would have been a close one, but uh, they just absolutely belted Essendon with ease. I uh, did tip Gold Coast, but um, I did read after the game that they've actually never won in Tassie, so I probably look, should have looked into that a bit more, but that was a great game. Well done, Nick Larky, boom home those goals, and um, yeah, earning his All-Australian Blazer. Good way for North End off there. Yeah, in, in the end, quite poor season. Backed in Fremantle away, and I was happy with this tip. They won convincingly in the end. Uh, backed in, obviously, Brisbane. They're, they're yet to lose, obviously, um, at home this year, which definitely comes into account when tipping in the finals. Uh, back to the Bulldogs, just because of the better team on paper. Geelong were fielding really half a reserve side almost, and they're able to run over the top in that fourth term. Uh, went with Adelaide, easy tip, really. Can't really be backing in West Coast. Gave a bit of damage for a round and a half, but Adelaide ran away. Tex Walker went bang. Went with Port Adelaide over the Tigers. Felt this one would be a good quality competitive game, and it was. And this one probably should have been a bit closer. Uh, this margin didn't really resemble what the game was because it was a quite close one, but Port ran away within that fourth term. Backed in the Swans, and yeah, I, I didn't tip the Swannies for a quite a bit, so I feel like getting on them there. Um, they were seeming like just the slight favourites, but um, yeah, they're in the lead for a three-quarter time, but Melbourne, just the stronger and the more classy side on the day, ran away with it and won. And went with the Blues, thinking they'd just get it done. They'd head into the final series looking quite strong, but no Crips, no Doherty seemed to hurt them, and the Giants were playing off high spirits to make their final spot, and they won convincingly in the end. So six out of nine, let's hope we can continue the form heading into the finals. So of course, everyone, there is four games coming up this weekend. We kick it off on Thursday night, arguably the biggest final there will be. Maybe the closest one this weekend. Collingwood hosting the D's MCG qualifying final. Really, how the bracket does play out is whoever wins this game is just going to look like an absolute show to make the grand final this year because the loser of this game will either have to travel to uh, Port Adelaide or Adelaide to play Port Adelaide or Brisbane to play Brisbane, uh, whoever wins that qualifying final. So it's going to be a tough pathway, uh, whoever does drop this game, so it's a massive one. Could be a bit of an early grand final preview from my finals predictions. I did have these two teams as the grand finalists just because I think, you know, most of the games, obviously, the MCG, I think they're the top two teams in the competition at the moment. Um, but yeah, this one's going to be a beauty. The Pies are slight favourites, $1.85, Melbourne and $1.95. With all the ins and outs and everything, Murphy and Moore are confirmed to come in. Dacos, as predicted from last week, is not going to be in the side. So right off the bat there, that's going to probably hurt them a little bit with a bit of flair and their ball movement, Collingwood, because uh, you feel like the Pies really need to bring up their A game with how they move the footy. Definitely one of the best ball moving sides when up and about, especially when they play at the G. They're a big, um, you know, they're a big game sort of side as well. They've played well in the big games, but so have the Ds. Obviously, last two, last time these two sides did play, the Ds got the wood over the Pies, and they really should have won that game by more than a Queen's or King's birthday match. They smacked the Pies really with scoring shots. They were just inefficient and only won narrowly. So, yeah, I think from what I can recall from that game last time, the Ds just beat them off defence. Their defensive setup was so good. They were able to, you know, jockey at the right time. They are able to push up towards a contest at the right time. Um, they defended superbly and really restricted the Pies ball movement who the last five or six weeks have been a little bit off the pace I think Collingwood with how they have been going at it look if you look at their game against Essendon they look absolutely amazing but it was against Essendon how's they going to stack up against some more higher quality sides because Melbourne are a team that really make you pay um, contested work and the defense or defense is some of the best stuff in the competition a very good side off the turnover and like looking at the Swans as well when they played them they just were able to make the Swans pay off turnover uh, which is just such a f important thing for finals because your contested game's got to be good not only of course your ball move but it's just that turnover game that's always the big one um, I think Premiers always are sitting in the top three or four teams with turnovers so yeah Melbourne are very good around the footy but Colin, where Collingwood could win it is just off belief you know there's I think mentally one of the best teams in the competition and of course we all know their ball movement they're one of the best sides I feel on being able to break free from a stoppage and just all in the same way, like hit a hand pass, get it forward, um, targets inside 50, all that whatnot. As for selections, uh, um, all that selection one on with the Ds. No Ben Brown. I think Tom McDonald will be coming in um, to replace, uh, of course, Petty, and they're probably needing an extra key forward there with Melksham going down. Bailey Fritch is 
a bit questionable heading into this weekend, but should be okay. Uh, because, yeah, I think with the Ds, where they need to win this game is their ability to score. Because I just feel like, you know, them scoring is sort of their Achilles heel this season. When they've lost games, they've been um, unable to put on scoreboard pressure. When they've had quite the good amount of inside 50s, I've lost a few games this year when they dominated inside 50s. So I think the difference for them winning or losing is just if they can be efficient in front of goals. Um, and they really need to sort of restrict the pies intercept game if they can just bring a lot, ball, a lot of ball to ground, get a few of their smalls involved. Like what the Lions did a few weeks ago to the pies, then they can really put on the points. Um, but yeah, it's almost just like if the Ds are unable to put on score more pressure, the pies just keep on replying, put on the score themselves. Well, I just see Colin run away with this one and win the game of footy. But, you know, Melbourne's defense should hold up. Um, I think around the footy, they're a bit better than Collingwood. Um, so yeah, for me, it's just if they can, if they um, are able to be efficient in their forward half, can they win the game? Because it's just always the bit of the good and bad this year. Um, but they have tinkered around their forward line a wee bit, and yeah, it's a coin flip game really. It's so hard to really look into these games because we just don't know. So this is a tricky one. Uh, but just like my finals predictions video that last week, I'll still stick with the D's. Um, if Dacos was to come back in, Jesus, a game change. I might have would have lent towards the Pies. I mean, they're the favourites to be fair, but that you know, I just think. Melbourne defense holds up in finals, I think, and same with contested work and definitely turnover. But you know, Collingwood are a side that can just snap the fingers, turn a deficit into you know a positive, and um, put on a score and win the game. But I just think the D's, I'm going to back in their system how they go at it. I reckon Melbourne pick up a close one, bit of a cagey affair, and the D's hold on and win by 10 points. And now for Friday night footy, first elimination final here. The Blues hosting the Swans at the MCG. Well, this is massive for Carlton. It's going to be their first final since 2013. And right off the bat, they were looking for revenge because the last two times, uh, well, you know, the last few times the Blues have been in finals, they've been knocked out from the Swans. The 2010 Elim final when they won narrowly at ANZ. And of course, uh, the Swans smacking uh, the Blues after they beat Richmond um, the week before in 2013. So yeah, that's just going to be a bit of, um, you know, a, a bit of a revenge possibly for the Blues. They'll definitely be thinking about those two games. But um, history side, look, I think these two sides have um, been a lot better in the second half of the year, especially Carlton going on an absolute winning streak. They've just turned around of how they play their footy. Stoppage dominance, that's really where they um, are very good with how they go at it. Um, now, well, what I have actually been seeing is they haven't been too great off the turnover game. Um, so that could possibly maybe hurt them. So they really need to be dominant around the footy because if you can convincingly beat the Swans around the ball, um, you usually can win the game. And, and there's some important hints, of course, as well. Paddy Cripps, um, the Swans usually struggle against Cripps and those big body midfielders. So, you know, your likes of Cripps really need to be big um, and dominant, I think, in this game. Uh, of course, Sam Doherty returns. So it gives them a bit of a, an injection of a bit of pace and a bit of ball use from, you know, behind the stoppage and at half back. So some important ins there. As for the Swans, they do probably get Tom Papley back in, which who has been very good um, in the centre bounces and, of course, has probably been one of the most informed forwards in the second half of the year. And Justin McInerney has been a very important player for the Swans this year. Gives them a bit of their swagger and drive off half back. He will be in. So, yes, yeah, both both sides have some big selection, uh, have some big ins. Uh, most likely, that is. So, yeah, with that aside, it's just who really who wins this game of footy. Well, I think the punters are definitely going going to be back in Carlton with this one. It's the first final in quite some time. The spirits are going to be high, you think. Um, they're playing at home in the MCG, so it's going to be a fairly dominant crowd, you do reckon. But as much as that is a positive... Maybe quite a bit of pressure is on them to win this game. I feel like almost when you look at it, the Swans have almost nothing to play with, you know, how this build-up's been to this game and the media as well from what I personally viewed. But, you know, it's a final. Both teams really need to turn up. The expectations are high for both sides. Uh, but, yeah, I think if the Blues are really able to beat the Swans around the footy, if Cripps can go off, I can just see them winning this game. Not to mention, of course, as well, their role plays have been magnificent. Um, definitely in the air, they really like to zone off the Blues. They really like to, um, you know, the likes of Kemp and Weedering, very good plays in the air, and they like to rebound quickly. They've been taking the game on quite well. I know they've been uh, not so great the last two weeks, the only season, but, you know, I think come finals, uh, they'll definitely be up and about, um, up to the task. And, yeah, of course, their forwards, Charlie Kerno, very dangerous. But, hey, Tommy McCartan. Uh, champion data-wise, he's been the best key back last five weeks. So I think that's going to be a really interesting matchup. But for me, the point of difference is definitely Paddy Cripps. But as a Swan side of things, well, 
they've been very good with efficiency and how they have moved the ball. You can't write off the Swans in terms of how they move the footy. That slingshot style, they score a lot of goals from D50 turnovers. So the Blues really need to be, um, you know, on their, you know, on on pace and definitely up and about in their defensive half. Weedering and Kemp and a few of those interceptors like McGovern are going to have to be really important. Isaac Heaney, you know, Tom Papu come back in. Sam Wicks, they have those numbers. McLean as well. They um, are a forward line that has been really humming uh, the last, you know, few months or so. So, yeah, I think this one could maybe be a bit of a high-scoring affair. Both sides like to put on a bit of a, um, a bit of a score, but just I think given it's at home, the Blues fans will definitely be up and about. And if the if Calder can really beat the Swans around the footy with your likes of Cripps and a few of those big body midfielders, I can just see him winning this game. It might be a bit of a bridge too far for the Swannies, but if the Swans can break even around the footy in the contested game, and I think I, I can back them in with their ball movement. And you know they they they're a team not to write off. I think the Swans play quite well as the underdog. So this one will be ripped up, but I'm going to be going with Carlton. Um, I just think, you know, with their, their finals brand, their turnover game hasn't been too great. Um, so that could maybe hurt them. But I just think I back them in with, um, you know, how they go around the footy. Um, and definitely if Kerno's up and about, if they're strong defensively, they should win this game of footy. So I'm going to go with the Blues over the Swans and they'll win this one. KG fair, but I reckon the fourth term, they'll run away with it. A lot of lead changes I do predict and they'll win by 17 points. Now, the second elimination final on your Saturday afternoon, 3.20 p.m., the Saints hosting the Giants at the MCG. Massive game here for both clubs. The Giants, well, this is an interesting fact. Throughout the whole club history, they've never lost their first finals game of a final series. So they've won every single time they have uh, from their first week of finals, which is a pretty interesting fact. And they are the favourites in this one as well. So, you know, I think a lot of punters would be definitely get around the Giants here. I think they have a better midfield than the Saints. Um, and speaking of the St. Kilda's midfield, the gap between how they play, um, good and bad, is definitely a massive gap. They can have games where they can really beat teams around the footy and they can show a bit of stoppage dominance. But then they can have games where they just get smacked around the footy. They look one pace. They look sort of out of puff. So, yeah, it's a big um, opportunity for the Giants to really own in the midfield, I feel. But both teams love to move the footy with a bit of pace, especially the Giants. They love to take the game on, of course, through the corridor. They're not really hand-passing as much as they used to with the Origin Army. They're wanting to kick, kick, find the corridor, hammer or receive, get it forward. Um, and, of course, their forward half has definitely been in some great form too. You have the likes of Riccardi, Hogan, Big out though with Bedford with suspension. He's he's really massive out because he brings in their pressure, a bit of their turnover, a bit of their pizzazz in their forward half. But you kind of have to think of you know the likes of uh, Brent Daniels needs to have a big game. Of course, Toby Green as well. Will Jimmy Webster go into him? So there's all the matchups for there to dream about. But you know Hogan's been in great form. So yeah, I think with ball movement and around the footy, I think I like the Giants with, with this one. But the Saints. They're one of the top defences in the competition that have been all year. They've been, as of late, a very good intercepting side. They've been able to nullify teams' forward lines, be very good in the air, um, and sort of counter off that. Um, and especially, yeah, similar to the Giants, they have really um, improved their ball movement, I think, in their forward half. And with the big ground of the G, you know, Marvel a little bit sl uh, smaller, I think um, they'll be able to pick apart their targets quite well. There's a good chance as well that Sam Taylor will come back in. So Taylor versus King, that's going to be a massive matchup for this one right here. Both teams have their positives in this. This is, again, a really hard one to tip. I really like the Giants here. They just continue to really prove people wrong, including myself. But same with the Saints. These are probably the two biggest sides that have proved me wrong this year. So I don't know who to go for it. It is a really tricky one. Just, I think, sort of just from what I watch with both these teams, I just like the Giants with how they do play. I think their midfield, they can really get on top. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, like the likes of Rowan Marshall, he's been in some great form. Can he make, make an impact uh, um, forward and really beat out Briggs? Briggs versus Marshall, I think this is a really underrated matchup with his game too. So, yeah, matchups galore. Tough one here, um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be still sticking with the Giants from last week just because I think um, with the bigger ground, they'll love to move the footy and they just continue to prove people wrong. This one could really go either way. I really like the Saints for this one too, but I just think the midfield battle, they're looking like a bit of the better side. And don't uh, don't get me wrong, the Giants defensively have been a great group as well. So yeah, I'm going to go with the Giants for this one. It's a really hard one. I, I'm really liking both these teams at the moment, but I'm going to be back in the Giants. Uh, but you know, the Saints, the home field advantage, I like them too. Um, don't get me wrong, but I'll back in the G-Man. They continue to prove people wrong, including myself, and they'll move to a semi-final and win this one by seven points.
And now we move on to the final game of week one of the final series and the final game of Saturday. The Lions hosting the Port Adelaide Footy Club at the Gabba. Second qualifying final here. And I still, I just think right off the bat, these are probably the two most vulnerable teams that go out in straight set. So this is a really big game here. Um, it's going to be crucial, I think, for both sides, obviously, to get this win. Because especially from Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide's perspective, I think they have a few injuries, especially Charlie Dixon, who, um, when he's fit, he's a really important player to them. So apparently, from what I've heard, he's not playing this week and he's not playing next week too if Port Adelaide lose. So you feel like if the power can get up here, he can uh, ripen up for a home prelim final. That'll be huge. But yeah, I mean, obviously, right off the bat too, the Lions haven't lost to the Gabba this year. Simple as that. And if this if this was a home and away season fixture, you'd just be backing in the Lions just a bit more convincingly. But you know, things do really, um, expectations rise and the pressure really builds come finals and the Lions have not been a good final side really in general. They made the prelim final last year and I thought their final series was very good um, compared to their expectations. But just in general, um, when they have looked the favourites, when they're looking like, you know, the team that's going to be that next team to make the grading and all that whatnot, they just seem to falter and they've gone out as well in straight sets the last few times. So history isn't on their side, but just looking at this year, they've just been awesome this year, um, especially at the Gabba. They've had a few close games, uh, but they've just been able to put away sides with just their forward half class. Uh, there's just so many focal points in that team that can make a difference. You've got, of course, the likes of Charlie Cameron. Can always slip out the back with a few nice goals. Uh, Lincoln McCarthy as well. Cam Rayner, Zach Bailey. And in their midfield, they're a top four clearance side. But Tay Porto are one of the top forward half teams in the competition too. They have their damaging players down there as well. Todd Marshall should be returning. You've got Pau Pepper, uh, Willie Rioli, his year I've absolutely loved. And Zach Butters, Horn Francis, Connor Rosie. They've had some big finals, especially Zach Butters back in 2020. So they have a few big game plays in there as well so look i think this one could be closer than what people suggest obviously the big noise and you know i'm following the crowd really is just the line should be winning this game of footy and i just think from history what history says this year they should be winning this because the thing that I've loved the Lions, especially at home, when teams have challenged them, they've just been able to flick the switch and put on a bit of a score with just how they move for footy. They just play so well at home. I think with Port Adelaide as well, they haven't won, beaten Brisbane at the Gabba for quite some time. I think I've read, I sort of need to break a bit of a hoodoo to win. So yeah, I think with that, um, from what I've stated, I'll back in the Lions. I just, I don't know. I'd love to see Port Adelaide upset as a neutral to make things interesting, but I just still think this is Brisbane's um, grand final berth to lose, and they should be winning this game of footy, um, and I reckon they beat them just with their class that they do have. But this one should be an interesting midfield battle. Um, I like both teams here with how they do go around it in the midfield, so I think whoever can win the midfield contest could maybe win the game because both sides, forward halves, um, I do really look good. So, yeah, I'll back in Brisbane though. Very good side at home. And I think they'll run away with it and win by 20 points. So over on there were my tips for the first week of finals for the 2023 AFL final series. Really excited for this weekend. Of course, I'm going to be streaming every single finals game come this final series. So stay tuned to the channel if you want to hear a bit of me commentary and a bit of my nothingness, especially the Swannies Friday night. Uh, but yeah, keen for this weekend. It should be um, four exciting games and maybe a few upsets. Let's see. Should be pretty interesting. Make sure to comment down below and let me know what you did think of my tips and feel free to comment down your tips down below too. Always do love to hear your fellas' thoughts. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you did go on to enjoy today's video. And until next time, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.